There's an old adage that most of us are familiar with and has been at the center of many debates and that is bigger really better. I'm guessing that most of you ladies out there are nodding your heads up and down right now, but I'm also guessing that if you are, your significant other probably isn't sitting right next to you or even in the same room. Probably because you don't want to start an argument about rubbers and if it's better to have a bigger tire or a smaller tire. Oh, what? What did you guys think I was talking about? Oh. Hey, what's up guys? and gals, Josh from Trailbuilt, and I can pretty much guess where you thought this video was going, but we're gonna stay focused and talk about the size of your tires and nothing else. And by the way, if you are looking to pick up a new set of tires after watching this video, make sure and package them with a new set of wheels so that you can take advantage of our free mounting, free balancing, and free shipping to any state in the lower 48. The debate of fat tires versus skinny tires has been going on since off-roading has been a sport and anyone that lives, breathes, sleeps, and eats four-wheel drive vehicles knows the debate I'm referring to. In bottomless mud, you might want something that floats to the top, but in mud with a hard-packed bottom, you might want something that's skinny that's going to dig down to where the traction's at. In the harshest of winters while off-roading in deep powder snow, a wide flotation tire will help keep you afloat and moving forward. But when you're on the road and it's icy or full of snow, or both, like it can be here in Northeast Wisconsin, a narrower tire will have more pressure per square inch or contact pressure and will bite and grip better than a wider tire that will just tend to float around on the top of the ice or snow. Although 12 and a half inch wide tires are the norm for everything from 30, 33, 35, 40 inch tall tires, there are a lot more options out there if you're looking for them. BF Goodwrench, Toyo, Super Swamper all offer pizza cutters if that's your preference, while Mickey Thompson and Super Swamper offer some pretty wide meats. Not sure which one is better for you? Well, if you have watched several of our past tire videos, then you already recognize a consistent pattern of which tire selection is objective and situational, meaning it just all depends on what you're doing with your tires. For example, one of our videographers, Zach, uses his JL mainly as a daily driver with the occasional off-road trip on the weekends, and here in Wisconsin, we deal with some pretty extreme winters. Therefore, Zach is running a 35-1050 Kenda Cleaver RT, 35 inches tall by 10 and a half inches wide compared to the more common 35 by 1250. A narrower tire will provide more what is called contact pressure, Therefore, more focused grip on the terrain. Contact pressure translates into pressure per square inch between the tread lugs and the object they're contacting. It is also what is called your contact patch. A narrower tire will have a smaller, more focused contact patch where all the weight of your vehicle is transferred through to the ground. The smaller the contact patch of the tire there is, the more the weight of your vehicle is going to be focused through each individual tread lug, increasing the contact pressure of those lugs and allowing them to really grip, grab, and bite at the terrain below. And obviously, the wider the tire is, the more contact patch is spread out, and the more the weight of the vehicle transferring through those tread lugs are going to be spread out, therefore decreasing the amount of pressure per square inch of each individual tread lug. Think of it like rolling bread dough. A wide roller will put more even pressure down over a much larger area and won't cut the dough to pieces, whereas a pizza cutter, for example, will cut right through the dough to whatever's underneath it. Then going back to what I had mentioned a bit earlier about knowing which one is best for us and why picking out the right size tire for you is situational is because it always comes down to knowing what the majority of the different scenarios you're going to be putting your tires through. Will you be mostly on pavement and dirt with very little mud or snow and a more narrow tire will work or are you traversing through deep mud and snow and a wide flotation tire is going to be the way to go there? Or are you mostly rock crawling where you want that higher contact pressure while aired down so you don't want to go too narrow or too wide either and a medium width tire would be best choice there. And the weight of your rig can also affect how wide or narrow of a tire you'll want as well. A heavy rig with a wide tire can give you the same contact pressure per square inch that a lightweight rig with a narrow tire can. 
Picking out the right size tire can sometimes be pretty daunting, but to keep it simple, a good rule of thumb is that wider tires will typically perform better for flotation in mud, sand, loose gravel, deep snow, whereas a narrow tire will typically perform better on hard surfaces like rocks, hard packed dirt, and on the pavement. And guys, this was a pretty quick overview on how the different widths of your tires can affect their performance in different situations. So make sure and let us know what size tires you have, what your vehicle is, and if you prefer a narrow tire or even a wide tire or even something in between and make sure and let us know why. Or even if you guys do have any further questions on the width of tires, make sure and let us know in the comments below. Other than that, guys, for new tires and wheels, make sure and check out our website at Trail Built Off Road. And don't forget to click that subscribe, thumbs up to like the video. And guys, as always, we appreciate all of you for watching and all of your support. I'm Josh from Trail Built, and we'll see you guys out on the trails.